Move it, troopers! On that double! Hey guys, this is Luke from the Scoundrels Cantina, and welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be going over all Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith Trooper types and variants. Revenge of the Sith is the richest Star Wars movie regarding the background details which are present all the time, especially regarding the vehicle and character designs. Because of its rich content, a huge amount of clone trooper variants that we know of today have all been inspired by what we got with the amazing Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. By the way, this is a follow-up video on our All Attack of the Clones Trooper Types video. Anyway, Todd the Other Scoundrel will be having the honors in narrating this video. At number 1 we have the Phase 2 regular white clone troopers that serve as the main military force of the Galactic Republic. At first the clones wore Phase 1 armor whose ranks were displayed through different colors on their armor but would slowly start to be more customized as the war progressed and signified their military group. In 21 BBY, Phase 2 armor was introduced and slowly started to replace the Phase 1 in the following months. When the Phase 2 was completely incorporated into the Grand Army, their colors and paint job on their armor signified the military group they belonged in. The Phase 2 clone armor had many different variations to it, as well as special attachments such as pauldrons, commas, visors, and much more, but we will get to that soon enough on this list. Just like the Phase 1 armor, the full Phase 2 uniform consisted of around 20 plastoid plates that were attached to a black body glove. Their helmet designs were a variation between the Phase 1 armor and the future Phase 3, also known as the Stormtrooper armor. Their armor was much more lighter and stronger than its predecessor and supported modular attachments. Unlike the Phase 1, the armor did not feature an internal life support system, necessitating the use of an external respirator in the absence of breathable atmosphere. The Phase 2 also had additional magnetized boots, a more pressurized suit that allowed them to fight longer in the vacuum of space, and a more advanced air filtration and oxygen supply system. The standard clone troopers' primary weapons were the DC-15A blaster rifle, the DC-15S blaster carbine, and a number of grenades and explosives. All the information about the regular Phase 2 clone trooper also applies to almost every single trooper type on this list. At number 2 are the Phase 2 clone troopers of the 212th Attack Battalion, who were all recognized by the orange markings on their armor. They were all a part of the 7th Sky Corps and housed smaller military units such as the 2nd Airborne Company, Ghost Company, the Parjai Squad, and many others. The regular 212th Trooper was the most common, although there were also the 212th Paratroopers who were also known as the Airborne Troopers. They were clone troopers specially trained for high altitude drops using special parachutes and jetpacks. Airborne Troopers had modified Phase 2 armor with a comma and a different circular helmet. Now here's a bonus regarding the 212th, and it is the ATRT walker driver who wasn't seen in the movie, although the design comes from Episode 3 as well as the 442nd Siege Battalion Trooper, who has the same prints as the regular 212th Trooper, but green. The entire 212th Attack Battalion was led by High Jedi General Obi-Wan Kenobi and Commander Cody, who was a clone marshal. Now Cody's armor is its own variant, as it is with all commanders on this list. He had very similar prints on his legs and torso which were in his Phase 1 armor, as well as a personally customized helmet with a visor, antenna, and gray stripes going across. He also had one antenna on his shoulder pad, as well as a personal jetpack. At number 3 we have the Phase 2 clone troopers, the 41st Elite Corps, and the 9th Assault Corps. The reason for it is that they're basically the same thing with two different names. The 41st regular clone troopers featured green armor markings when they were wearing Phase 1 armor, although with Phase 2 armor, they are seen with light gray printed armor for some reason. When on Kashyyyk, their regular troopers were either considered scout troopers for some reason, or the 41st and 9th simply sent their specialized clone scout troopers to fight on Kashyyyk. No matter which it is of the two, they obviously wore clone scout trooper armor, which had even more advanced plastoid armor, and was camouflaged in order for them to blend into swamp type environments. The Scout Trooper helmet had wider visor plates, and the entire Scout armor was a predecessor of the Imperial Scout Troopers. The 9th and the 41st also had ARF Troopers, who were known as ATRT Drivers, in their Phase 2 armor, which were seen on Kashyyyk. ATRT Drivers wore lighter clone armor for stealth that had smaller shoulder pads and a specialized helmet. They were better trained in survival skills in comparison to other clones, and were specialized in riding ATRT walkers as well as going on reconnaissance missions. The 41st Elite Corps and the 9th Assault Corps were led by Jedi General Luminara Unduli and Clone Commander Kree. 
Commander Gree's Phase 2 armor was most likely almost the same as his Phase 1 armor, which featured green markings, although in Revenge of the Sith, we see his other Phase 2 armor, which was specialized for scouting missions and camouflage to suit the swampy environment. Gree was the only clone in the 41st and 9th Corps that had a regular Phase 2 clone helmet type on Kashyyyk. At number 4, the Phase 2 clone troopers of the 21st Nova Corps, also known as the Galactic Marines, who wore white and purple colored armor. The Galactic Marines were an elite unit of some of the toughest clone troopers in the entire Grand Army of the Republic and were part of the 4th Sector Army. Their armor was designed for harsh environments and resembled the ones of the clone snow troopers seen during the Clone Wars as well as the future Galactic Empire snow troopers being their direct predecessor. The 21st Nova Corps troopers had additional backpacks on them, as well as the most unique looking Phase 2 armor in the entire Grand Army. They were led by Jedi General Kiari Mundi and Clone Commander Bakara. The Galactic Marines commander mostly utilized regular Phase 2 armor, although with a lot of personal adjustments such as the Blizzard Protection sight plates on his helmet, as well as an anti-blast comma and a pauldron that matches Corps' colors. At number 5 we have the Phase 2 clone troopers of the 327th Star Corps who were recognized by their yellow colored armor as well as that they always utilized pauldrons, commas, and ammo belts, which was usually only seen with clone commanders and captains. Units that were within the 327th were the 7th Legion, the 101st Regiment, the Hawkbat Battalion, and many more. The 327th Star Corps was led by Jedi General Aayla Sakura and Commander Bly who was a clone marshal. Commander Bly's armor was very similar to that of his troops, although it had different yellow color schemes in his torso, legs, and helmet. He used additional macro binoculars in his helmet, and just like his troops, always carried a pair of DC-17 blaster pistols. From Commander Bly's design also came Commander Devis, who is seen in Revenge of the Sith Visual Dictionary, and is exactly the same as Bly, but only in red. At number 6 are the Phase 2 Biker Advanced Recon Commandos, also known as Bark Troopers, who were part of the 91st Mobile Reconnaissance Corps. Each military unit had their own Bark Troopers, which utilized their own armor types, which was seen during the Clone Wars many times. The Phase 2 Bark Troopers of the 91st wore a modified helmet variant with a smaller visor, thus directing the Trooper's view forward, allowing him to better concentrate on his route. The Bark Troopers were in fact ARC Troopers trained to handle vehicles, exclusively Bark Speeders. We do not see any regular Phase 2 clone troopers of the 91st in Revenge of the Sith. The 91st Mobile Reconnaissance Corps were led by Clone Commander Neo as well as a number of Jedi. For some reason, Neo has the exact same armor as the 91st Bark Troopers. At number 7 we have the Phase 2 clone troopers of the 501st Legion who were recognized by the blue markings going across their armor. By the way, they are definitely our favorite Phase 2 trooper types. The 501st Legion fought in countless battles during the Clone Wars and made a big name for themselves in the Grand Army of the Republic. They were led by Jedi General Anakin Skywalker and Clone Captain Rex. When Order 66 was issued, Rex defected, thus going into exile, and was replaced by Commander Apo. The 501st troopers in Episode 3 are basically what we covered as number 1 on this list, but just with different colors. At number 8 are the Phase 2 clone troopers of the Coruscant Guard who were recognized by their armor being mostly covered in red. They were trained as elite shock troopers specifically for deployment on the planet Coruscant where they basically served as law enforcement. They guarded government buildings, served as prison guards, performed duties as bodyguards for Republic officials, and were trained as urban peacekeepers. Their leader was Commander Fox as well as Commander Thyre, although they had a few more commanders here and there such as the badass Thorn and Commander Stone. Pretty much everything about the Shock Trooper armor was covered at number 1 on this list. At number 9 we have the Phase 2 clone pilots, although we like to call them Phase 3 because in the Clone Wars there was a variant utilized between the Phase 1s and the so called 2s. The Phase 1 clone armor was worn up until 21 BBY when the Z75 headhunters were in mainstream use with which the Phase 2 came. The Phase 2 would be replaced around 20 BBY when the ARC 170s came into mainstream use which brought the Phase 3 that we see in Revenge of the Sith. The Phase 3 pilots had a helmet that wasn't fully enclosed unlike the previous versions and it didn't come with full body armor but instead a pressurized catsuit. Clone pilots were randomly picked from the clone army and were equipped with a bolt caster, a blaster pistol, a supply dispenser, and ammunition. Pilots also had a box attached to their chest armor that supplied oxygen to their helmets. V-Wing Starfighter pilots would have exactly the same design as the Phase 3 pilots, except that their helmets were fully enclosed and resembled the Galactic Empire's future AT-AT drivers. And finally at number 10 are the two honorable mentions that we wanted to add, which are the Coruscant Rescue Ops and the clones that were disguised in Jedi robes. The Coruscant Rescue Ops were not really a trooper type, although they had clones serving in them. 
They basically served as emergency rescue, cleanup, and firefighting crews on the Republic capital of Coruscant, as well as aboard Republic warships. Their uniforms were of course radiation and fireproof, and they were seen piloting fire speeders during the Battle of Coruscant. Now on the other hand, we have the clones that were waiting to ambush Jedi that came to the temple, which were basically regular troopers disguised in Jedi robes and mind wiped due to Order 66. They are seen in deleted scenes of Episode 3. Anyway guys, this is it on the video, and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about the vast galaxy of Star Wars. If you want to watch more videos like this one, the link to the playlist of our other Star Wars stories and videos will be in the description down below. Also, if you want to support this channel, hit that subscribe button for even more videos like this one, and remember guys, God is awesome, may the force be with you always, and we'll see you in another video, you rebel scum. This party's over.